I would now like to raise a specific point in order to show how complex is the question of the cultural legitimization of comics. It being understood that without this cultural legitimization, comics scholarship can hardly develop. I have spoken earlier of an El Dorado. It is true that France is usually regarded throughout the world as one of the countries, if not the country, where comics are taken seriously, integrated within the cultural scene, and more highly praised than anywhere else. But the truth is, the level of legitimization that comics enjoy is quite difficult to estimate. I have devoted an entire essay to this problem, an objet culturel non identifié. I've seen that you wrote it. <laughs> I can show it, it's here. <laughs> It all depends on the criterion you take into account. For instance, we have but one comics museum in France, located in Angoulême. I used to curate it. Whereas here in Japan you have several, not only this beautiful Kyoto Manga Museum, International Manga Museum, excuse me, <laughs> that welcomes our conference, but also others. Uh, devoted to major artists like Tezuka Osamu, Kitazawa Rakuten, Yokoyama Ryuchi, or Hasegawa Mashiko. Forgive my accent. <laughs> there is no museum devoted to a single cartoonist in my country. Belgium has just recently inaugurated the Hergé Museum, celebrating the father of Tintin and financed by the heirs of the artists. Even more significant is the fact that for many years now, comics are no longer taught in French universities, which is unlike the situation we can observe in neighboring countries such as Belgium or Germany. Except for Pierre Frenot de Ruel, all the most renowned specialists, all the scholars who have been extensively writing about comics these last 20 years, and whose works are considered more or less authoritative. And I think here more especially of Benoit Peters, Harry Morgan, Thierry Smolderen, and myself. <laughs> we all work outside the academic sphere. None of us has a position as university lecturer. We are carrying our research outside the academic institution. This status of independent scholar can cause financial precariousness, sorry. But its main consequence is that we are allowed to follow a more inventive approach of the media. That we are less confined within the existing theoretical frames and their ideological presuppositions. The colleagues and fellow scholars that I have mentioned, and myself, tend to develop original concepts based on an in-depth study of the media and a close contact with it. We do not try to verify pre-existing theories by applying them to comics. So the fact that we are outside the institution gives us more freedom and leads us to some sort of intellectual heterodoxy, which in turn confirm our marginality with respect to hegemonic frames of scholarship, as we can observe them not only in France, but in the academic sphere as a whole. It is not an easy task for me to explain why French University is so little interested in the comic art, because I myself feel that this is an anomaly. But perhaps part of the explanation has to be found in the structuring of the academic research. It has in the degree of development of the various disciplines. One does not always perceive how different the situation is in this respect from one country to another. For instance, the domain of cultural studies that has enjoyed an extraordinary expansion in the Anglo-Saxon world in the last decades is not yet fully established in France, where it is still very marginal. Since the triumph of structuralism in the 60s, 
We have remained, on the other hand, much more concerned by the semiotic approach of the medias. I do not know how these two different main lines of research are considered and favored here in Japan. But I can assure you that between the Anglo-Saxon academic discourse about comics and the French one, there is a clear distinction. Due to the differences in our respective intellectual traditions and academic frontiers. And to say the truth, the hegemonic position throughout the world of the academic works published in the English, English language leads to the fact that the French specificity is equivalent to a cultural exception. Another discipline that is considered essential in the United States and that is nearly non-existent in the French university is that of gender studies. I can illustrate this situation with an example that concerns me personally. A scholar from Chicago, Amanda MacDonald, signed a long review on my essay La Bande Dessinée Mode d'Emploi. You didn't bring that one. <laughs> <laughs> in the journal European Comic Art, volume 1, issue number 2, published by the Liverpool University Press in England. Her article starts with the presentation of my, I quote her, my complicity with bande dessinée masculinism. On the pretext that my book scarcely registers gender as a legible element and dynamic within bande dessinée, and passes over gender in authorship. authorship. End of quotation. To me, this criticism is just irrelevant because the book deals with comics from a semiological and aesthetical point of view and does not concern the analysis of fictions according to contents, nor wishes to provide a sociological theory of the media. But the question of gender is top of the list on Amanda MacDonald's agenda and corresponds to such a strong doxa in the Anglo-Saxon academic world that it is just impossible for her to admit that an essay about comics has not to automatically deal with this specific point.